Patty Simone here, and we're at the New York Times Small Business Summit speaking with Scott Case, who is a former CTO of Priceline and right now actively involved with Startup America, which is a brand new project to help fuel entrepreneurship across the country. So thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us. You bet. Thanks for having me. If you could tell me a little bit about the project and uh, what the goals are and how people get involved. And then, of course, gave out some great tips before. If you could share any other tips for people who are in that space that they are juggling so many things and they really want to try and move their business forward and to be, you know, what's that? How do I be the most strategic, I guess, about the use of my time? Sure. Well, time is actually the most limited resource for startups, uh, more limited than almost anything else. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we help you really create a set of relationships around your business um, at Startup America that can help you access talent, access customers, and access capital in the smartest way to be able to leverage your time. And by joining Startup America, which is very easy to do, it's simply www.s.co, um, you can get access to a whole network of resources all across the country and relationships and networks that can help you grow your business. And so one of the things that I see again and again and again with young young companies in particular is they don't invest invest enough time creating that web of relationships around their business that can help them get to scale and tackle some of the key challenges that every business faces, which is getting new customers, hiring the right people, and maybe at times raising the right capital to help you grow. Right. Well, I was also thinking about, you had mentioned specifically General Assembly, and I've had some a bunch of people, because I've been meeting with tech startups myself, trying to get as much information as possible about funding and financing and whatever, um, and they've mentioned that before. What were some of the other places that you mentioned as well? Well, if you're here in New York, General Assembly, Techstars, and there's a new group called Startup Health, it's in the healthcare vertical, um, are really great places for their accelerator programs. You have to apply to be able to get into them, but oftentimes they also run run independent programs that young high growth companies can participate in uh, throughout the year. And so there's a great opportunity and then to, across the whole country there are all kinds of accelerator programs um, that are building and Techstars has a network of them. There's also something called the Global Accelerator Network, all of which are driven around taking young companies that are at one stage and helping them get to the next stage in a very prescribed, typically a 90 to 120 day kind of education period that helps them beat up their business very, very fast. It's all mentor driven and uh, they can help you get to scale. But it's really for the companies that are at the right stage of their growth trajectory. Yeah, and that's where I find the dilemma. I've been to a few pitch things that are, uh, you know, professionally put together and there's always a panel there. And the people that are on the panel say in their, you know, descriptions, in their bios that they're there to help fuel growth and, and help early stage. So they're early stage investors. And then invest uh, uh, company after a company gets up and pitches and they've been in already for a seed round. They've done this, they've done that. And each time these people say, eh, you're not a good fit for us yet. So it's like how, you know, where is the really the true early stage investors out there? Because to me, it was a, it was not positioned properly. Let's put it that way. Well, look, no investor is going to invest in the first pitch, no matter how good your pitch is. So the, uh, I think the mistake that many startups make is assuming that they build something for a while or they create something, then they go and try to get investors and they hit some kind of a wall and it slows the whole business down. The most important thing is that the moment that you have the idea and you've made the commitment to go build a company is to start to build that web of relationships around you. Some of it will lead to capital, but you're much, much better off creating a relationship with the, the investor community, but in particular, just individual people that are power fans of your business that will then lead to access to capital, then lead to customers, will lead to the talent that you need to grow your business. So we spent a lot of time at Startup America trying to create that web of relationships in cities all across the country to give you access to a broader community, but you as a founder of a startup have to invest time in that as a core strategy. Yeah, and th this is something that I was coming to late in the game because I think a lot of people, and especially maybe it's an older demographic because I'm not in the 20-something demographic, we are not hardwired that way. It took me a while to realize and actually really seeing the social network movie is when I hit right up against that brick wall, oh my God, I need funding. And up until that point, I was trying to do it myself, thinking I was going to organically do it. So it was not in my DNA to think I need to get people to invest in this? Well, not everybody does. In fact, 85% of high growth companies don't take any venture capital money. So 
there's a very small percentage of companies out there that will get growth capital from a venture investor. Most of the time, the investment's going to come from fueled by the business itself, but also from other types of investments that can be made on the cash side. But I would be very, very cautious to anybody out there who thinks that their primary challenge is raising money. And a lot of people get hung up on the notion of, well, I've got to go get capital first. What you really need to do is to build a great product, get some early customers and the feedback from them, but really build a network of people who want to see you succeed. And all the other pieces will fall into place as you build out that community around you. But if you don't have that community and you try to use a rifle shot approach of just saying, I'm going to go and approach this particular type of investor, it's either going to be a very long cycle time for you to get to that place or it won't happen at all because you haven't brought them along with you on the journey. So bring these people along with you as you're developing. Don't wait until you're at some point where you think you're ready. There's never a good time. You've got to start right away. Okay. All good advice. Thank you so much, Scott. I really appreciate you taking the time to give us your information. And go check out Startup America. I know I am. <laughs> I'm going to do that to start building those relationships. Awesome. Thanks for having me.